They'll be calling you a radical back to my plutonium wars, back to the whole activism movement, back to my friends at the Million Mass March. It's important that we stand strong right now. And I can tell you right now, and I can guarantee all of you this, as you know, my activism has gone on. This YouTube camera does no justice for my activism as I put myself in some very scary, vulnerable positions as I have for a long time. I'm gonna talk about plutonium wars as it's been confirmed now. This website is saying the veterans that that was a tactical nuke that hit nukes inside just as I reported clear back then and that this tactical nuke, it doesn't have to be a nuke. They just hit the nukes because they're everywhere, which it's being confirmed. That's what's going on in the Ukraine. This is a plutonium war. This is a nuclear war. And it's out of hand. And what they're doing to the Russian people is horrid. They're paying a heavy, heavy burden. The economic war that the Queen and her puppets, you know, Hillary and Barack and all of them have freaking gone along with and the GOP operation Foxconn. This is very serious times. Very serious. As I put myself in these vulnerable positions, it's very important. I knew. I knew when they got this through yesterday. And I want to tell this to John, Sue, Steve. That is the foundation. I want people to understand the foundation of the Million Mass March. All my groups I've been involved with, all my activism, all my incredible experiences, my father used to say all the time, my Special Forces Marine father used to say, boy, you're way too pretty to have an opinion. When I was young, I knew. I know what that means. You think I was born with these scars across my face? It took years to live in this violent place. I understood it takes a long time to grow. Born again? Is that because, oh, of course I've been born again. In the literally, not this spiritually captured lion, Jesus died, talking about this whole philosophy that everybody's, this still comes down to choices among men. And we have to stand strong where we put ourselves. I want people to understand, John, Sue, Steve, myself, all of us, all my years of activism occupy, uh, you know, everything. The ones who get it, I'll tell you, I know who the ones who get it. The Million Mass Group. As we put that baby together, that early March, I want to talk a little bit about Masonic philosophy, religious philosophy. It comes down, all of this still comes down to choices among men. You know, the Illuminati, these freaking things, it still comes down, you know, we go back to, I always go back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Now let's remember, you want to talk born again? His mom used to talk about his legs. How would you, I mean, he's stricken with polio. The guy used to love to swim in the lakes. I mean, he was an, out in the, in, I mean, gone. You don't think that changed him? When I got cancer, I'm sitting in there going in and out of a coma. You don't think that changed me? You know, we have new birthdays. By the way, our hospital likes to set the birthday from the last chemo. That's where they draw the line. And they set the goal for February 26th on me. I'm getting close. That'll be my third birthday, which that's where they drew the line. Born again, but I was always an in the street activist. We have to stand very strong right now. Very strong. And I knew it right off the get. You know, they're going to they're gonna come at us because they know we're the real deal. They know the Million Mass Group. They know we are the real deal. Now, I could prove to you the hypocrite movements that have that are so horrible. The only thing green about this co-op, so-called left green bullshit and the radical insane right, it's all co-op bullshit. What's going on in Oregon right now? Okay, his fiance consulting. We're green alternatively. I stayed with the Nader, and I will never forgive that scumbag Nader. I will never forgive that arrogant prick for handing the military coup of 2000 to Bush on a silver platter. Now, Gore, the bloodline, he wouldn't have named Alito and Roberts this whole thing. It's little teeny things. It still comes down to choices among men and integrity. And I could prove it over and over in history. We go back clear to the, I, I really believe, I'm starting to believe, you know, here's history reporting herself as Barack Obama. I really think he's Maximilian Pierre. I really think he's Maximilian Pierre. Starts out as this incredible activist, you know, and then Maximilian Pierre at the end, you know, they're, they're, you know how many people in France was freaking guillotine a day? And he was sitting there with his list. Okay, get that one. He, remember he started out as a activist that was against capital punishment. Well, here's Barack Obama standing there with his Nobel Peace Prize saying, okay, drone those ones, drone those ones, drone those ones. I mean, it still comes down to integrity and choices of the man, and he's making his choice. He stands at Stanford, at Stanford, not a, he didn't go to a 
public university, went to the private mass miller killer freaking extortion, one of the evilest institutions in all of humanity is Stanford University. It's an evil, evil, evil. It's based on these flat all these philosophies that go from extracting natural resources from the earth, uranium mines, timber, sand, all of it. You know, that's you know, as a boy, I used to go back from San Diego to Utah. And my mom used to always say it best. She was the Woodbury artist. My dad sent off for the special for our ranch here, our ranch there. I used to drive back and forth, and my mom used to say it. My incredible, beautiful maiden. Woodbury, excuse me, Everlene used to say about her himself. Not only could she draw like a camera, she could have been her own model. We would drive down, there wasn't even a freeway there then. And I can remember when I was a boy in that Impala station wagon, you would get close to the ocean. You start to get closer and closer and closer, and I could smell it. And I would go into this fit, and I'd. My mom used to say he would start to hyperventilate. That's how sighted I would get. I, I, I would really, you know, there was nobody down there, and I'd get there, and it wasn't, oh, I'm going to get a surfboard, go out the surf. I would get there, and I was. Because I would be able to walk down on the sand, and I could see the marshes, and I could smell it, and I could feel it, and then the sun, and all of, the, of life, the creature, wells, sea lions, birds, I was just, here in Utah, out on the family ranch, there was these giant berms that was pushed up by the ancient floor of Lake Bonneville, and untouched, untouched. And the swallows would nest in them by the hundreds of thousands. And you'd walk and you'd walk and walk and walk. And my grandma used to make me a little sack and I would just go for days with my dogs. When I was a boy, she used to call God's symphony and I would find them. And I would sit there and go, oh, oh, oh. it would take my breath away. We're killing all that. That is the crux of all life. You don't care. And these fake green fuckers, these hypocrites in fucking Oregon, the only thing green about the nader, that I stayed in the Nader house in DC. They kept saying, come for the inauguration of the Million Mass Movement. The inauguration that John Anthony and I had worked together on so long. He come up with it, and Steve Grant, and everybody worked so hard, and we put it together so long, and it's an amazing movement. All the movements I've been around, you know, stomp your feet, we're mad, we don't have, that group gets it. Their activism never stops, just because you don't see, those people are activists 20, and it's in the reality and the purity of what is right and wrong. That's what it's all about. It's not Jesus died so I can rich. It's not I'm green so I can be rich. Those phony fucking frauds of co-op. These prove it. The only th I stayed at their house. These dirty, stinking, filthy, fucking hippie, fucking moochin', fucking loser, fucking meth addict. You know, living in the Nader house, free. You know, their so-called activism, getting money all over. I never seen such a bunch of fuck. That almost killed me, by the way. And then I go to. I slept on a park bench that night before I led that march. And I'm telling you, we're in the streets. The cops respect us. And you can, and John Anthony, and all these people can confirm this. We never had a problem. D.C. police, New York City police are wonderful with me. I love those guys. They were awesome with me. people driving up to us. You can, there are plenty of people there. Hey, Kev, come here. These are police officers. What street do you need shut down? Here, do you need a water? Hey, do you need me to go get you a sandwich? Kev, you know, you're probably tired. You've been going all day. Can I go? This is no bullshit. And you cannot make this up. We've been walking all day through the streets this year. We go down, we're in front of the White House, and there's a young man with his marine blues on. I grew up in that culture. Oh boy, did I grow up on that culture on San Onofre, San Onofre on that beach, Pendleton. He takes his blues off, his jacket. Beautiful young man. I have it on video, I put it up. Throws down his jacket, goes on this incredible rant. I mean, the kid was passionate, he was crying. He had tears in his eyes, he'd been in Iraq, he had watched it. Some other Marines, young Marines, arguing, fighting. I mean, it was amazing. He walked, he did exactly what John Kerry done, and he didn't even know about John Kerry. But look what John Kerry's turned into. You know, people say, well, they're threatening, they're ordered to do this. Yeah, so then why would you run for office? You know, when you go, I mean, every president has been, tried. they've tried to kill them all, every one of them. It's always that way. Every, I can, I can go all the way to every president in the history of the United States, there's been assassination attempts on every single one of them all the way. They put them in the bubble. If you're going to run for office and I think you have to be willing to stand up. They want to threaten you. That's, of course, these powers. And I was quoted just like this. This says it all about Teddy. Teddy. Roosevelt. Morgan said, this is what Morgan himself, the anti-trust the creeps that freaking rape this earth. That I, 
We bought the son of a bitch and the son of a bitch wouldn't stay bought. So now politicians, they buy the son of a bitches like they always, and the son of a bitches stay bought. You know, it's like this. This is the reality of what's going on in the Western United States, especially in California and the genocide of the Pacific Ocean. It's happening. You can't wrap your mind around, oh no, it's happening. And the co-ops are coming at us. And they're going to come at us and we have to stand strong. It's like this. Like a little kid. I don't want to hear it. You know, if you're not willing to fucking be in the street and be the fighter, and I want to say this about the keyboard activists, the best ones in the world are all the disabled. The best activists I've met are disabled. They even show up in the streets in their wheelchairs, some of them. And I'll tell you why. It's because they have time. They're Oh, no. Like FDR. Born again in the reality. They know what suffering and pain is. Like Teddy. Set apart in parks. Why did he do that when he was slaughtering animals? He was born again. It hit him one day. Oh, my God. What am I doing? It's not about hunting and killing these animals. It's about the appreciation, you know, of getting in there. I think when he floated down the Amazon and freaking... You know, I had his Mormon was going to take his own, you know, the headhunter's right there, you know. I think it woke his ass up, you know, and he, he was like, whoa, whoa, we're, I, I'm slaughtering. And he made those incredible quotes, you know, and he, he, I mean, he stood against the machine and says, we're setting this thing because these monsters will slaughter all of us. That's what they're doing. That's what Stanford did. That's what they all fucking do. Cut down the redwoods. And I will quote all the famous preachers. I've been reading a lot of great preachers from the 1600s in, in America. You know, these philosophies, you know, do not kid yourself. The United States was formed on Masonic War, absolutely. But it still comes down to sight, you know, the Masons have more skull and crossbones, whatever. Still comes down to choices among men. You know, you can believe in whatever philosophies you want, whether it be Illuminati, bloodlines, freaking these, everything. It still comes down to people in power still have to make choices. And we see what choices, everybody's in the fucking club. You know, I go back to that incredible preacher in 1938. First, they came. For the homosexuals, for I was not a homosexual, so I did not stand up. Then they came for the craftsmen and the tradesmen, for I was not a tradesman, for I did not stand up. Then they came for the Jews, for I was not a Jew, for I did not stand up. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to stand up. You don't think the Germans all went along? You don't think the Italians all went along? You don't think the Japanese all went along? They're still going along, so many different cultures and people. The United States, you don't think everybody in the United States is going along? Things come from here, not from here. You know, you go back to the French Revolution, you know, they took the royals out, but how big of a price do we pay? You know how many freaking, I mean, that was such a slaughter blood fest from hell. It was sick, it was evil. You know, it was horrible. We're not about to go there. We have to fight with our minds. This is a philosophical war. Is it too late? I don't know. Maybe the Mother Earth, she's a powerful thing. Can she heal herself and fight back? Maybe. But we're pushing her to the brink. We're, going to, we're pushing her all the way to the brink. And I want to say this, that Barry Antoinette, Let Them Eat Yellow Cake, signed yesterday, is a major, major deal. And we as activists, especially the anonymous Million Mask group, you know, at Flood Wall Street, they stomp their feet, get mad, they got no answers, don't understand a tariff, don't understand all these things that work, all these things, usury laws, they don't get it. You know, Occupy didn't get it, it had the energy, it had the power. You know, the, the co-op freaking gra astroturf that they threw into the far radical right to extort natural resources and make BP richer, sewing off the beaches at BP with British Petroleum sewing off so-called public beaches and their yacht wars. If that didn't wake you up, the cover-up of Fukushima does not wake you up. Hillary Westinghouse, Clinton, this whole freaking cabal, they think we have to change this philosophy and it can't be co-op, get a gun, God, gold, because it's all co-op bullshit. The Million Mass group, that is the only group that I've ever been with that really gets it. And I mean per person, per person in the streets. They get it. Lots of police get it. We have to fracture from within. This has nothing to do with groups. This has to do with choices among men. This has to do with right and wrong. And the plutonium wars that are going on in Russia and the Ukraine, they are nuclear wars. You don't have to have a nuclear tip. Hit the nuclear, and they've done it twice now. And they're going to do it. They are fighting. Obama signs the deal with India. Putin counters and signs the deal with Egypt, which neither one of them are going to happen because the activists they're not about to let it happen in India. It's not going to happen. I'm telling the great activists, they're killing activists. But we are very much in danger right now. And where I put myself 
as an activist in the street in the place where I put I put myself in incredible vulnerable position especially I'm in critical condition I was but you know so we have to have faith and we have to stand strong and you have to go off the intuitive mind you know I, I make the mistake sometimes even I do it and I say the intuitive mind serves the logical mind no he didn't say that that's my mistake the intuitive mind serves the rational mind that's what Einstein said we have to worship we have to run off the intuitive mind but then we need logic we need logic and it all comes down you know and I learned this from the Buddhist monks they taught me this as a boy in San Diego they taught me this as a boy to keep that rock in your pocket it's no coincidence I found that rock when I you know the leather bucks and everything that's going on that's a leather buck skinner it's a real one the only real one it's very very valuable I found it just laying on the beach in Osage side I don't even know why I reached down and picked it up didn't realize what it was so I'm gonna return it and make sure it gets into one of the museums down there where it belongs they keep a rock in their pocket and they walk and they walk it and like I said the walk that I'm gonna do at San Onofre or excuse me Diablo Canyon it's nothing new I've done it so have the Buddhist monks done it we've done it together my whole life I've done it I've walked and walked and walked because I understand what the gift of life the gift of life everybody gets all wound up about money and wealth and all these things we're killing the very freaking thing that makes the gift of life so precious the environment you know water air you know all of those precious precious things going for a walk and be able to look you know the natives call these what do the natives call these ones they're children you know Oak Ridge Tennessee they call them old you know at Oak Ridge where they've gone where are they going they didn't go south this year for the first time in my life this is as far south as they went you know KSL finally has come to me there's some stuff KSL's had me blackballed and they'll admit they had me blackballed they'll admit it here they come they've had me blackballed they made for life they've had me blackballed and by the way KSL's running a report somebody killed 26 geese out there that day that I was shooting the thing with eagles I could hear them out there shooting and just dumped them you know these fucking monsters are not going to be happy until they kill every last one of them kill every last animal on earth kill them all Europe did it Europe did it and they paid a price you don't think that the climate change could devastate a freaking place it did it in Europe we're going down the same path will humans go on I don't know but you know destroying the things that matter destroying the things that I mean and these fake green hypocrite fuckers you know I'm here to tell you I've been all over and I travel all over the worst of the worst or Eugene the most polluted place in the world that I've seen in the United States is Eugene Oregon you go up on the Mill Creek and they claim they're green it's filthy disgusting guard because they're they're hypocrites you know the, the Ralph Nader people in DC the biggest hypocrites and I want to say this about the anti-nuclear movement what this is John Hurley himself's words to me you know at the million mass march when I gave my speech the inauguration speech Steve Grant, myself, and Sue, and you know, Katie, and John Anthony Fairhurst. Where's Kevin Camps? He lives there, and I says, he's will never participate. He's not, an John, he says, he ain't anti-nuclear. He's making a couple hundred grand a year, and he's freaking, he's not anti-nuclear. None of them are. Arnie Gundershit, all of, none of them are anti-nuclear, and I can prove it. You know, it's this. Warhol warned us. He warned us. Popism is dead. You just don't know it's dead. Post ignorance. See you in New York City on the tw 27th. I'll be there for a while, you know. But to the Million Mass group, you know who you are. They're going to come after us hard now because they have carte blanche now. Not Kevin Blanche. They have carte blanche now. He signed it. Barry Antoinette signed it. They're going to come at us. So I always quote that one scripture. Though I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. That's the way we have to be. We have to have faith. We have to have faith that good can overcome evil. And we have to have faith that something, some powers there be will watch over us. I say it's the angels who died in front of me. You know, all the people that died of leukemia, all my friends that died of leukemia that I've watched, and I've held their hands as they've died, including my father, including the love of my life on Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. You know, my love, 
Oh yeah, I have an incredible romance. I always have since I was a boy with the earth here in Utah, with the earth in California, San Diego. That's my romance, and I will never leave her. Never, she's never betrayed me like everybody else has. You guys from the Million Mass might stand strong because they're going to come after you. I will guarantee because they know what I know and you know. It's the only movement in the world right now that is the true, real movement that can really make things happen because they all get it. They're smart, they're informed, they're strong, they're willing to get in the street and they're willing to fight. They know that that's who we are. They're going to come after us. Fear no evil. Stand tuned.